so um, I kind of, by no choice of my own, ended up going to like art shows I was into, like Shepherd Ferry or whatever else, and found myself hanging out with more and more indie rock kids. And that was kind of like, um, those were my friends. And like, I wasn't really into a ton of indie rock, but I definitely respected it and had been listening to like Gang of Four records and stuff of my own. And um, these guys started throwing parties and they were organic. And um, it, it kind of, uh, it was simultaneously happening with me stumbling more into production. I couldn't play in hardcore bands because no one liked hardcore. So I was like, whatever, I'll try and make hardcore on my own with computers. Like, yeah, all right, like, that's not going to happen ever. but. Being 16, I thought, yeah, I mean, what if I could like program double bass pedals and reason? Like that'd be fucking crazy. <laughs> and so I started making like hardcore music on reason, which is like you know the scream distortion effect on like some bass lines and like way too many kick drums and like bad preset snares. But at the same time, I stumbled into like a lot of this dance music that was kind of uh, doing what I was thinking, like a lot of the Mr. Wazzle records and like. The first time I heard Waters and Nazareth, the Justice record, I was like, whoa, this is like what I want to do. This is like makes me want to like punch people in the face, but like you can play in a club also. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> and at, at the time, um, my friends were throwing these parties and like, I'd say, can I play for free? Can I play your backyard for free? I just want to play these records. I've always kind of been that like talking to a class clown jerk that wants to push his own views on people. Kind of like Gomez, hey yo. Anyway, so I go to their backyards and play these obnoxious techno records and like people would ask me to play hip hop and I get like these weird stares from black dudes like you fucking sell out, why are you playing techno? Like you're some black dude and I'm like, not really, I'm from Iowa, I'm like a fake one. <laughs> but anyways, it went from me playing these records and like only reason I was getting gigs so I was saying I could play for free to people being like, hey you can come back, I kind of like that music, it was different and I was learning how to play Fergie in between so they wouldn't kick me off. And then all of a sudden Daft Punk played Coachella. And I mean, went from being like this DJ people booked because he was free to the only dude who had like the Daft Punk discography on vinyl. And they were like, oh my God, we love house music. And it wasn't techno anymore, it was house music. And people were like, we went to, I went to Coachella and we were all indie rock and fucking cool. And then like we saw Daft Punk and they're indie rock and at Coachella. So like, we like dance music. And like, as a product of circumstance, I got booked more and more and I got to play records that I actually liked and I realized that like I couldn't design club flyers forever, or, like crappy t-shirts and I got to do something I really loved and play music I was really passionate about and uh, luckily been able to create a career out of this and I thank my lucky stars every day. And um, yeah, so that's how I got into electronic dance music. Gary, you want to learn how you did? All right. Um, well, Number one, I mean, you guys call it electro. Like my thing with with techno, I, I call it techno music because it's technologically based. So anything that's made on a computer, that was always my kind of angle when I went to record labels. I always said, well, you have a guitar, and you have drums, and you're always gonna have rock bands. But with a computer, you're able to push it to the next level. And um, you know, people looked at me like I was kind of weird. And um, so I think when you break it down in all these subgenres, drum and bass and dubstep and electro, and it's just good electronic music, you know? I think when you try to like categorize, like people think hard's an electro festival, you know? It's like, I, I like to look at it as a good music festival, but how I, how I got into it was basically, I mean, like I said from day one, you know, I, uh, since this music's been coming from, you know, Manchester in, in the UK, and we tried to do it in LA like in the early 90s, and I just, I was just, I thought I was gonna be like a 60 year old man going, man, I was a techno DJ and I had my records and show my kids and like, I just thought nobody was ever gonna care. And my wife was like, why do you listen to that weird music? And uh, you know, it just so happens, like you said, whether it was Daft Punk or whatever, I mean, Daft Punk played the El Rey in 1997, two nights, I DJed both nights with them. And I used to always play Daft Punk records. I was like the only guy that ever played, like I can't believe it now, it's like 2010. And those records I played fucking 12 years ago everyone's playing at every club you go to anywhere. It's just, it's kind of amazing. So for me, I'm just happy that everyone finally caught on to this music and it's blowing up because I thought it was never gonna, I, I was kind of like, wow, I guess I'm just gonna have to like find another job and do something else. And then, uh, you know, I started doing art and I started just DJing again. I was like, well, what am I, how am I gonna, you know, I have, I play vinyl. Like, I don't even know what to do. Like, what do I do? Do I get Serato, Tractor, this, that, and, uh, a guy that I work with named Uberzone, he was on my label. He's like, try Ableton and do that. And that's what I've been doing. And ever since I downloaded Ableton Live, I don't think I've ever like gotten off of it. Like every single day I wake up, all I do is play around with Ableton Live with music and it's just it's just amazing. So every day I just story. drink Pepsi. <laughs> 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 
tons of Pepsi and the creativity flows. Pepsi. <laughs> but, you know, you know, for me, I mean, I, I, I think I look at it a little bit different than everyone else because, you know, I was like riding, like I've seen this thing go up and down like three times already. You know, like, like when I started in 91, it was hot, then 97, it was hot, and now like 2007, 2008, it's hot again. So like, I'm just happy that finally, and I think, I think finally it's not just like, oh, it's a cool thing for a minute. It's like, it's infiltrated every type of music. I mean, we have Little John and uh, Will I Am and Noriega and all these dudes showing up at my events to just play, set to go. they all just show up and play for free because they want to be involved in this electronic scene. I mean, it's, it's infiltrated in every style of music and um, I'm just happy that that's happened. I'm happy you guys are here, so thanks. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one thing we can talk a little bit about is like how, how like the, the genres are really meshing right now and, and and uh, I mean, on one hand, the, the different categories of music are are not as much of a uh, of an obstacle anymore. And then even more so, just how electronic music is 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 becoming sort of the norm for for everything. Uh, that's something that's been interesting for me. I know because I've been making uh, making music and playing records for for you know about a dozen years. And I remember you know in the '90s, uh, if you were a DJ, then you were a DJ that played a certain genre of music, and and it was just you know. There's a few exceptions where you can go and play between, you know, straddle different sounds and stuff. But for the most part, if you played hip hop, you played hip hop, and if you played house, then you played in those like, you know, Guido clubs, and it was just like separated. That was it. Um, and then like really in the last few years, um, everything's been meshing. And what I love about it is I feel like a lot of what's been going on with with these sounds blending together the last few years, a lot of it's been sort of it's, it's, it's experiments that started in these small little indie clubs with DJs and then people started rapping over these sort of like hybrid sounds that the DJs are making and then that style of rap became more and more popular and now it's the sound of radio. But it's ill that when you think about it, it all started with these like small little marginal left field DJ sets from about three, four years ago. So, I mean... Um, you know, I know for myself, it was just, it's, it's been kind of crazy to witness a lot of, of that getting popularized. Like, um, even, you know, I remember when I was working with Kanye and, and like, uh, when, when uh, the Busta song, the Busta Rhymes song, the, where Swiss Beats sampled Daft Punk for... Uh, Technologic. Technologic, yeah, yeah, what was the Busta version called? Uh, Touch. By Touch, Touch. yeah. So that came out, and I remember we were like on a tour bus in Germany with Kanye, and I was like, oh yeah, he sampled Daft Punk. And Kanye was like, who's that? And, and I was like, okay, hi everybody, <laughs> sit down, <laughs> how long you got? <laughs> All right, and then, you know, played him a bunch of songs, and I, and I, even, I remember, like, r as soon as he heard um, Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, he's like, oh, that's crazy, I want to sample it. And I was like, no, 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 like, because for me, um, you know, I came up in hip-hop at a time where, like, when you sampled a record, it was supposed to be from another era, like a there's supposed to be like a generational difference, you know what I mean? Like, if you listen to 90s hip hop, they sampled a lot of 70s records. Um, and when, I remember when, when Ye was like, I want to sample Daft Punk, for me it's like from the same decade roughly, I was like, no, no, you can't touch, you can't, you can't touch something that just came out. Like, I didn't, I, I didn't want him to do it, but he was going to do it. And then I remember he made, he made the beat that became stronger. And like a few months later, we were, we were off tour, I was back at home, and he emailed it to me like, all right, you still think I shouldn't do this? Like, listen to this beat. And then I heard it, I was like, all right, this is kind of very good. <laughs> and then I remember he spent, he spent months writing those verses. And then Stronger came out, and then I, I worked with him a lot on the Graduation album. And I think that album, um, coupled, coupled with like sort of the production sounds of, like, of Timberland and Neptunes and Swiss Beats and uh, a couple of these producers, really were, uh, were instrumental in, in introducing um, these electronic sounds to hip hop. And even I think what Old John was doing, you know, when Crunk was really big a few years ago, like, just the very fact of, of having these, like, drum machine drum sounds and, like, rave synthesizer sounds in rap beats, sonically it made the sound of rap get a lot bigger and, and more, uh, like, sort of aggressive and percussive and, and, and less, less kind of dirty and grimy, just more about, like, sounds that, like, hit you in the gut, you know? And, um... You know, this is at a time when, when, when hip hop was a huge part of popular music. So when hip hop became more electronic, then next thing you know, like R and B and pop became more electronic. And 
and now you know the black eyed peas are copying uh, you know <laughs> all our buddies and it's funny yeah but um, no disrespect at all it's just like that's that's how you know pop records it's it's this isn't that, that's not a jab at anyone like any any record that's on top of the charts is probably something that was inspired by something by a rec you know by a record that was more underground or marginal a year or two ago and um, it happens to be the direction that it took so it's fun because now we get a lot of work. <laughs>